in this session, we're in Santa Monica to work with Mishka, who is a blind dog. Uh, she's a border collie chow mix that has have had she has had her eyes removed. Now, uh, her dog walker or future dog walker is actually filming this, and she works with some blind dogs on her dog walk, which is uh, shows that she's got some good skills. Uh, but the other dogs don't have their eyes removed, and so she can read the dog's pupils and the facial expressions, which helps give her a little bit better understanding of what the dog is feeling and seeing. In this case, we don't have that option. Her eyes are closed and there's nothing behind the eyes. So uh, basically, what I want to do is show that how we can use some scent games to kind of create a positive association. Now, the guardian tr didn't have the best meeting initially with the dog. I have a better, I have had a better response with the dog. Now I do this, not that the dog walker does, isn't a uh, professional, but I'm a dog psychologist. So um, I used a lot of little tricks to make sure that she felt comfortable and I was able to get her to take some treats directly from my hand, which made everyone feel more comfortable. Um, one of the things I was talking about off camera, I decided to film it, is I have a puppy, well, he's not a puppy anymore, his name is Quest, uh, a Dalmatian. Now he was a puppy last year. Before I went to visit him, I took a hand towel like this, I mowed the lawn, topless. There was no footage of that, thank you God. Um, and I took this and I wiped myself down with it. What I did after that is I sent it to her in a Ziploc bag to my breeder who was in Maine. What we did is we put it on the ground like this and I took one of these treats. Now these are high value treats. These are called Tricky Trainer. These are the chicken liver. This is my preferred treat because after 2400 plus dogs, I've never, I only came across one that wouldn't take and it was because there was a lot of stuff going on, including gunshots and that was overwhelming for the dog. So what I had the breeder do, I sent her a bag of these treats as well. She put this on the floor and we dropped a treat on it. And every time the dog came over and licked the treat up, it got a little bit of my scent. When I went to pick up the dog, he came straight up to me. He knew exactly who I was because dogs meet through scent. Now I was trying to engage with her earlier. She was kind of laying down. Dogs that are blind and deaf will sometimes over uh, enunciate through their body language. And so she was kind of overacting, so to speak. And I don't mean it in a bad way, but that's her way of communicating. I really don't want you to touch me. I really don't want you to come near me. And so she laid down. Laying down is a good sign because it shows the dog is comfortable. But turning away from something is, is a sign of, a little bit of a sign of resignation sometimes. And so I haven't tried to touch her. A lot of us, when we have dogs like this, we try to touch them and show them I'm a good person. But touching them when they're not ready for it is not a good thing. We want the dog to approach the human. So what I'm going to do is we have the dog walker has, uh, because it's a little bit warm and she walked here, she uh, used this to towel herself off a little bit. She's not sweaty too bad, but we put a little bit of her scent on it. And even if you're not sweaty, it'll put your scent on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come down here. Now, I'm being careful. I'm moving in stages. So I knelt, knelt down. You saw she got up and kind of moved a little bit, but she didn't move away. And she's doing a little bit of, she's investigating with her nose, which is kind of what we want. So now what I'm going to do, and she's going to feel the rush of air when I move this. I'm going to try to do it fairly gently because I don't want to spook her. There we go. So I don't know if that was a car or a little bit of a grumble from her. Um, so now what I'm going to do is put a treat right on it, and I'll put another one right nearby. And you can see she's already picking up on it with her nose. So I'm not telling her where it is. I'm letting her find it on her own. So she found one. Now she found another one. And, this, and now she's getting a little bit of the dog walker scent every time she takes one of these treats. Now you can do things to help the dog find it by blowing across a treat. Uh, the reason I like using these treats is they have no preservatives and so they have a very, very strong aroma. Dogs have very little taste buds, but they have a lot of sensory. Well, one of my apprentices, Sam, I probably get this wrong, but she said that if they were to take out the little sensors from a dog's nose, it could cover the whole dog's exterior body. They do it for humans, it would cover like half of our head. And so their sense of smell is much greater. So you see now, she's putting her chin on it and she's investigating it. Now so she's backing away a little bit, so she's not quite comfortable. So we're gonna kinda go at her pace what I'm doing is just kind of, this is what we call a jackpot, a whole bunch of different treats. So what I'm gonna have you do is, when I take one of her guardians, oh, there we go, she's doing it on her own. This is even better. I would think we were gonna to have to lead her to it. There we go. Now this uh, orientation is better for the dog because her snout is orientated down, so when she gets the treat, she's getting more of a sniff of the scent of the uh, dog walker. So scent is, like I said earlier, how dogs meet. 
And so not only are we introducing the scent in a very positive, uh, introducing the scent, we're doing it in a very positive way because it has now the association of these delicious treats that are chicken liver, which have a really strong aroma. And we're not pointing them out. Here it is. You missed them. So, and so, yeah, I would just hold on to that. She's doing everything we wanted her to do. Um, so she came in, she sniffed, she got some, moving away, coming back. So nobody's forcing her to do it, so she gets to come back and go, ebb and flow, ebb and flow, and that's really helpful. If you, for, if you have a dog that's fearful, blind, deaf, or uh, with all their faculties, and you force them to confront something, you will make them develop behavior problems just because they don't have the ability to move away. Dogs have a fight or flight response, so half of their default response is literally flight, which is to move away. And so if we don't give the dog the ability to do that, they will develop other psychological problems. So this is, uh, I would probably take this one step further um, without being too uh, invasive. I don't know if, if the dog walker has used any uh, lotions or uh, perfumes or things like that. And she doesn't have to tell me right now, but a lot of times our, 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 the stuff that we do to prepare for the day, our deodorants and stuff, have a specific scent. What I'd like maybe the dog walker to do, and this is great, see how she's walking around, so I'm gonna make it even, make her more advantageous to do this. Uh, there we go. So she's, she has a good sniffer, which is typically the case uh, for dogs that are blind or deaf. So what I'm doing is kind of creating a little bit of a scent trail to bring her towards me. And so you wanna start on her, so it's right there, and the next one, if you notice, it's hard to see on the carpet, but it's like only an inch away. So, uh, she took one and walks and walk away. That's fine. We don't want to force her to do more than what she's willing to do. And the idea is, each time she does this, she go should go a little bit further. Just like us, as we feel gain confidence, we go a little bit further and a little bit faster and a little bit deeper. And it's the same sort of thing. So you see now she's sitting, but she's doing a little self grooming. Also, another good significant uh, interaction that shows I'm comfortable. If you are about to get in a fight, you don't pull out a nail file and like file away your nails. You know, you prepare for a fight. Laying across it, also another wonderful sign. Um, let me go ahead and help her, but there we go, touching it to her. I'm not touching her, but I dropped it and touched her paw. So you see that's kind of activated. Now she's going around zoning, is what we call when they go back and forth looking for something. And see, she's, her, she's panting a little bit with a sign of stress, but we can see her tongue is out a little bit. Uh, her mouth is a little bit wider, more open. Her ears look nice and relaxed. Her body posture looks nice and relaxed. So even though she left a couple of treats, we don't have to point those out to her. That's okay, she can find those later. What, uh, I started talking about the perfumes and I kind of get a little sidetracked based on what she was doing. What I'd like the guardian to do is maybe take uh, a, a t another towel from home, a hand towel, and after taking a shower, um, let yourself, dry, you know, you can use it to dry, dry yourself mostly off, but then once before you have any perfumes or anything, take it and rub it across your body and like, I mean, spend a couple minutes doing it. So every part of this has been touched by your body. Um, and then put it in a Ziploc bag and bring it back over here so the dog is only going to get that scent without catching, you know, pollen or things as we're walking back over here. And then what I'd like the guardian to do is once a day, or, or excuse me, several times a day, pull this out and drop a couple treats on it. Let her get the treats. Now, at first, I'd like it just to be just the high value tricky trainer treats that I went through earlier because those are really high value. We want to jumpstart this process. But once she gets more comfortable with it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to feed her a little bits of kibble. Now, in the book that I talked uh, about earlier, they have uh, uh, food games, and one of the games is like putting food into in little batches into the food bowl, which is something that I'd like to have the handler do. Um, so we, by associating things with the dog that are good, that the dog needs, that it likes, like eating treats, bully sticks, things like that, without touching and just being around can help the dog feel more comfortable because now I have more exposure around that person, and I'm building up trust. You know, they didn't touch me. They didn't do anything bad, nothing bad happened. And a matter of fact, every time this person comes around, I feel good. I have a friend who lives in Venice and his daughter is, uh, he's working tonight, he works in the movie business, but his daughter is coming over with his wife and, and their son. I get her a little pony every time that I go visit her. And so she comes up to me, she's like, do you have a little pony for me? She loves me almost as much as her grandparents, as long as that's a sacrilege to say, little Francis does. Uh, but basically, uh, we're doing the same sort of association. So if every time I go to visit Francis, I bring a little pony, I, she has more of a positive association with me. The more the guardian comes over here and the dog is interacting with in good positive ways, but the, the person's not trying to touch or do anything, it'd be nice if we can get you sitting on the floor next to the dog without any touching. And it's going to be, and again, a little grooming. Chewing on the bottom of the, t uh, the that's again, a minor, minor little thing, but it's really important. One other thing, if you have a blind or a deaf dog, keep a journal. 
especially when you first bring the dog in, it's the progress is so gradual, a lot of times we overlook it. And so sometimes it helps to actually have a journal and you go back and look at the first page and you're like, oh wow, I forgot when she wouldn't do this. I forgot she wouldn't take treats from her hand. You just, it's progressive, so you don't think about it. So it's nice to give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back and know what you've helped the dog accomplish. And it's also stressful for us. And if you're stressed because dogs are so perceptive of picking up on our energy, if you're nervous or anxious or stressful, this is something that the dog walker and I talked about, um, it can cause a reaction in the dog. So we have to be supremely confident when we're interacting with the dog so that it knows, hey, they're not worried about it at all. Um, so basically what I'd like the guardian to do is pull out this towel and when we have the next towel after the, uh, the dog walks out, a chance to bring the other one back and do it in different rooms, in different places in the house, different times of the day. Um, at first, just start out with maybe four to, you know, maybe about six to eight treats. Sprinkle them around the, the deal like I, like I did. And then do it in different parts of the house. If you're in the back room doing a little bit of work on your computer, bring, pull that out, throw it down, throw a couple treats on it. Uh, you know, let her know where it's at, lead her up to it, but let her do the exploring on her own. Um, and then I'd like the guard, the dog walker to, um, uh, we're going to, uh, well, we'll probably do this here. Uh, putting scent on food can also be really helpful. So we're going to transition. At first, we're going to use just the tricky trainers, and the guardian's going to do this independent of the dog walker. After doing this, maybe maybe do it two or three times today, once or twice tomorrow, and then tomorrow, put like half of the maybe two or three treats of the high value training treats, and then put about eight to ten pieces of dry kibble. So now I get the really good stuff and the stuff I get on an everyday basis. Now one of the things I'm going to have the guard, uh, the dog walker do is reach into the bag and pull out a little bit of the kibble, rub it between her hands and let it fall out into another bag. So we're going to put the dog walker scent on the food. Now when you have a dog that's overwhelmed, sometimes it's too many elements, it's too much for the dog to process. Well in this case what we want to do is just do scent. So we'll do this independent of the dog walker being here. So the dog is able to get a little bit of sense of the dog walker without the presence of the dog walker. And then when the dog walker comes in, after enough feeding, it's like, oh, this is the taste I get whenever I get my food, or these tasty treats. I like this. So I have a positive association with the person, and I can feel a little bit more confident, and then that helps the dog walker feel more confident in terms of, not that she's insecure about it, but we want both parties to feel very comfortable with each other. So there's a nice, calm, balanced energy. All right, so I don't I usually sum this up by saying this is a video that teaches you how to do this. This is a video to teach how to introduce scent to a uh, blind dog in a positive way.